Tonight we're focusing in on Zoom with Galaxy AI on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Ah, a baby tiger. Check out his claws as he prepares to pounce on that frog. Close one, but not as close as this Zoom. We can literally count the whiskers and... Oh look, Mum's here. Good thing I'm nowhere nearby. Go wild with Galaxy AI on the new S24 Ultra and zoom in on the epic day or night. Get yours now at Samsung.com. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour One. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, 877 877- 973-7425 if you want to be on the program. Well, we got to begin what actually is the big story for everyone today. Ron DeSantis, in writing to Tucker Carlson's TV program, articulated his vision on Ukraine. Let's set that aside for a second. There's a CNN poll. Here's the takeaway from the CNN poll. This is the headline. Most Americans care more about picking a 2024 GOP nominee who agrees with them on issues than one who can beat Biden. According to a CNN poll, more American Republicans want a candidate who agrees with them and affirms their worldview than one who can beat Joe Biden. They don't care about beating Joe Biden. They care about beating each other. They want to vote for someone who says their side of the GOP is right. We see this shaping up and can tell this poll is true by Ron DeSantis' vision for Ukraine. DeSantis' position, in a nutshell, is Joe Biden's position. We should support Ukraine defensively against Russia that invaded their territory and keep our word to Ukraine, helping them defensively, but we should not give them offensive weapons, allowing them to expand the battlefield. Joe Biden has been very hesitant to give them long-range missiles and F-16s because of that. That's what Ron DeSantis says, except Joe Biden says it's in our national interest to help Ukraine, and Ron DeSantis says it is not a vital American interest to support Ukraine, and that has caused a meltdown from some on the right. Ron DeSantis is giving them what they want, but not saying that it's a national security issue. Therefore, they are angry with Ron DeSantis. And, oh, he's an isolationist. He's just like Trump. No, Trump's position is we should do absolutely nothing to help them. We should back out of this and let Russia take over. That's Trump's position. The other wing of the GOP, some would attribute to Mike Pence and Nikki Haley, and I don't know that this is actually true, is that we should give Ukraine anything and everything they want. The DeSantis position is a middle road position of give Ukraine weapons to be able to defend themselves, recapture territory taken by the Russians, but it's not in the U.S. national interest to do anything that would cause American troops to be engaged in Ukraine. And that's a key part of what he said or put in writing, that we should not do anything that would cause American troops to be committed. Therefore, no long-range missiles and no uh, F-16s that he thinks would cause Americans to be engaged. Now, I will tell you, Ukrainian pilots are right now inside the United States training on F-16s. Biden will give them F-16s, and perhaps DeSantis will come out stridently against that. We will see. But the most notable portion of all of this is the reaction to Ron DeSantis. Here is the headline from the New York Times. Ron DeSantis says protecting Ukraine is not a key U.S. interest. The Florida governor on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show broke with Republicans to attack President Biden's foreign policy and align more closely with Donald Trump as he weighs a presidential bid. That's that's what he claims. While the U.S., let me read you the statement, while the United States has many vital national interests, securing our borders, addressing the crisis of readiness with our military, achieving energy security and independence, and checking the economic, cultural, and military power of the Chinese Communist Party, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between Ukraine and Russia is not one of them. Except... 
they leave off key aspects of what he also said. In particular, that we don't want to pursue regime change with Russia, which no credible person really wants. And also that he's happy to help Ukraine, just not give them weapons where they could expand the battlefield outside of Ukraine. It's kind of kind of interesting how they're positioning this. And so you have a wing of the Republican Party, an absolute meltdown against Ron DeSantis for literally having the exact same position Joe Biden currently has. Joe Biden hasn't given F-16s or long-range missiles to Ukraine. But Republicans would rather be right than win at this point. There is actually very little difference in the reaction from some of these Republicans who are mad at Ron DeSantis than from the stolen election Kerry Lake crowd. Just think about this for a minute. I know this is going to make everybody mad, but it's true. Ron DeSantis literally right now in Ukraine has the exact same position of Joe Biden as Joe Biden, except Ron DeSantis won't say it's in our national interest. In fact, he says it's not. Even though his policy is exactly the same as what Joe Biden is currently doing, give them defensive weapons, help them, don't commit U.S. troops, don't allow them to expand the battlefield outside of Ukraine. That's Joe Biden's position. That's Ron DeSantis' position. But because Ron DeSantis' word choice included saying it's not in our national interest, a lot of these Republicans want to burn him down. There are Republicans who believe the election was stolen. They, they go beyond the idea that there were some shenanigans. They go beyond the idea that Republicans got outmaneuvered by Democrats in courts who were able to get judges to change election procedures in 2020. They really believe that the Dominion voter machine stole the election. And if you don't articulate their view of it, they are outraged. So you can have a candidate who says that, yes, in fact, there were shenanigans, which is true. And Democrats were able to get judges to change rules in the middle of an election, which they should not have been able to do, which is true. And that allowed Democrats an upper hand in the election, which is true. But if you're not willing to say the election was stolen, these people will burn you down. It's the exact same phenomenon. Both sides in the GOP would rather beat each other and define victory by I'm right, you're wrong, and look who agrees with me than actually beat the Democrats. There used to be a time within the Republican Party and the Democratic Party that we gave license to candidates to nuance a path to try to build a broader coalition. And at this point, it's like, hell no, you're not allowed to say this thing I disagree with to grow your coalition because I want to be right and I want you to agree with me. Where's this? Oh, my gosh, this thing. Sorry, y'all, my, I hit the, I pounded my fist on the table and it set off my soundboard and it started playing music behind me. <laughs> I didn't even know it could do that. Nonetheless, you get my point. Ron DeSantis is articulating a pretty mainstream path in Ukraine. But his opponents think his word choices have to line up with theirs or else. The stolen election crowd, there are people who agree there were shenanigans. I'm one of them. There were shenanigans, and the lawyers got outmaneuvered, and they were able to change the rules, and that gave the Democrats an advantage in 2020. But I don't believe the election voting machine nonsense. It's not true. It's been disproven, but they would rather be right. Carrie Lake would rather go to her grave believing the election was stolen than actually win the freaking election in Arizona. Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania would rather go out of his way to believe the election was stolen and alienate independent voters than he would actually win an election. There are Republicans on all sides these days who want to show that their side of the party is right more than they actually want to win an election. They would rather back Joe Biden and all of his policies and judicial picks than allow any candidate room to try to find a different way forward that still accomplishes most but not all of what they want. 80%. You know, Ronald Reagan used to say your 80% friend is not your 20% enemy. You just agree on 20%. Now it's like, oh my gosh, you disagree with me 20% of the time? Screw you. I'm finding someone else who agrees with me 100% of the time. That's my frustration here. This gives none of these candidates really room to breathe as a candidate. And by the way, this goes for Pence and this goes for Haley. Do you really believe Mike Pence 
or Nikki Haley would want to commit American troops to Ukraine. What happens when they say, no, we, we actually kind of agree with DeSantis. We don't want to exacerbate this war and draw in American soldiers, sailors, and, and airmen. And are they going to burn them down too? DeSantis, if anything, has threaded this needle maybe too finely. Because if these other candidates come out and say, you know what, DeSantis is wrong. I think we need to give Ukraine F-16s and long-range missiles and let them take the fight to the Russians. That's going to make them look like they want to expand the war and possibly draw us in. That's going to put them on defense. I mean, let's make no bones about it. Ukraine has actually engaged in surreptitious attacks inside Russia already. What happens if they fire our missiles in our planes into Russia? What do you think is going to happen? And by the way, I actually am more supportive of being more aggressive towards Ukraine. The Ukrainians are running out of ammo right now because Joe Biden is dithering. And that's the other funny thing here is that Ron DeSantis' position aligns very much with Joe Biden's, except the actual president of the United States of America in the here and now has failed to keep Ukraine supplied with enough ammunition, and they're starting to run out of bullets. And that's not Ron DeSantis' problem. And notice all of these Republicans who are aligned with Biden, they're not taking Biden to task for dragging his feet on helping Ukraine. They're more upset at Ron DeSantis for saying it's not in our national interest to help them. Even though he wants to help them, it's not a vital interest of the United States. And they're madder at Ron DeSantis than they are Joe Biden. Interestingly enough, when Tucker Carlson introduced the clip and read Ron DeSantis' statement, he said DeSantis is not a neocon. He doesn't want to engage in massive American intervention abroad. DeSantis is winning the Tucker Carlson primary, which in and of itself is a good thing. Tucker Carlson, deeply influential among the grassroots base. It's been clear for some time he has a bias towards Ron DeSantis and has moved away from Donald Trump. And now with the Dominion uh, voter lawsuit and the behind the scene messages, we see this more and more. Tucker Carlson has never been a big fan of Donald Trump. I have a sneaking suspicion. I suspect before we get to the middle of the summer, you're going to see the Trump fans go all out attacking Tucker Carlson. They have largely danced around Tucker. They haven't wanted to engage Tucker Carlson. Between the leaks from the Dominion voter lawsuit and Tucker seemingly defending Ron DeSantis' position, I suspect you're going to see open warfare on the right between the Trump wing of the party and Tucker Carlson. And I think that helps DeSantis too. We have some intriguing candidates running for president of the United States. We have Mike Pence. We have Nikki Haley. We have uh, Mike Pompeo getting in, I think. Ron DeSantis will be getting in. These are really intriguing candidates. I don't want to be the person who digs in my heels and says, well, they said this thing that I don't like. Forget their actual substance of policy. They used a word choice I hate, therefore screw them. I, I, I don't think that's responsible. I think you have to give license to these candidates based on what all of them say, to deviate from you where you are as opposed to you being so hell-bent on being right and having every candidate echo exactly what you think that you would rather be right than lose. And remember, this is the key important thing here. Never take a position in a primary that costs you a general election. DeSantis may be playing it too clever by half, essentially adopting Joe Biden's position without Biden using Joe Biden's words. But it's a position where the bulk of the GOP is. The majority of Republicans in this country, majority of Americans, want to help Ukraine, but don't want Americans going to Ukraine to die. That's DeSantis's position, regardless of whether you like how he said it or not. And the fact that there are people who are upset about it means more people really want their word choices affirmed than they actually care about winning an election. So my kid has a queen size bed. We've got a king size bed. We got him bull and branch sheets and he's used them. He had like kid sheets and now he's old enough. He doesn't want the, the action figure sheets anymore. Well, we got lost because I mean, the sheets look like our sheets, except they're queen size sheets and they got put in our closet and the kid was in despair. We got him bowl and branch sheets. They've gotten softer and softer. And he's like, where are my real sheets? He refused to sleep until we found the real sheets because they're that soft. They're that good. They're made with a 100% 
organic cotton thread. They get softer in every wash. You can stay cozy all winter long with a set of bull and branch sheets. They really are that good. We have them on multiple beds in our house. My goodness, my seriously, my kid, uh, he's finally like, my sheets are for kids. I'm I'm grown up now, and uh, it's just a, a step of quality above what he had, and now he's like, can't sleep without these sheets. They're designed to feel incredible for all sleepers. They're made without toxins. They're free of pesticides, formaldehyde, other chemicals. They fit the deepest mattress, too, which I love because we have a very thick mattress on our bed, and it fits. It doesn't, like, bunch up and then snap off in the middle of the night when you roll over. You can get 15% off your forced order Bull and Branch sheets when you use promo code ERIC at BowlandBranch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. That's Bowl and Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here. Glad to have you with me. The phone number is 877-973-7425 if you want to be a part of the program. I, I, I want to expand on this point just a moment. It's something that's been bugging me for a while across the board in American politics. I think this is part of postmodern culture where we don't have the truth anymore. We have our truth, my truth. No one says I think anymore. They say I feel. Everything becomes very personal. More and more, we understand what candidates are doing and hate what they're doing in that every candidate wants to expand its coalition. Whoever the candidate is, they take a position say or do something that tries to grow without alienating. And more and more, people want to be alienated from candidates and give candidates no grace to articulate a vision that gives them room for compromise. We used to allow candidates to take positions where we understood, I get what he's doing, I wish he wouldn't, but I get what he's doing, and I'll, I'll let him do this. Now you get a candidate like DeSantis who wants to support Ukraine, wants to give Ukraine arms, but also not alienate the isolationist wing of the party by saying, I don't want to commit U.S. troops. That is Joe Biden's position right now in this country. But because DeSantis said, I don't think Ukraine is a vital American interest, they want to burn him down for saying that. They, they, who cares what his actual policy is? It's his words that matter. We used to, as a nation, before we move fully into postmodernism, understand what the candidates were doing, and we gave them a little bit of grace to try it out. And this applies to all candidates. Nikki Haley is trying to be a staunchly uh, robust American foreign policy. You understand why she is, given her background as a U.N. ambassador, uh, given her worldview, She's also not a neocon. She doesn't want to just start forever wars. But there are those who would destroy her. Oh, she's a neocon. She wants to she wants to start forever wars. She, she wants this American foreign policy. We're always at war. That's actually not what she wants. But because she's willing to suggest we should have a robust American national defense presence abroad, suddenly, oh, she wants forever wars. There's no license. Uh, and no grace for candidates to try to broaden their coalition anymore. It is everybody's got to be siloed into a very specific position that agrees with a particular wing of the GOP. And if they try to broaden beyond that, well, they've betrayed that part. It has internally gotten so tribal within the GOP. There are tribal wings within the GOP now. And you have to be in this one and not that one. You can't be in both of them. You can't straddle the fence or you're being disingenuous as opposed to you're trying to win an election. The bottom line rule is, and, and James Carville and Paul Begala wrote this book a long time ago on how to win elections. It was actually a really good book. If you ever want to read a book on how to win elections, they did a good book. And one of their points was never take a position in a primary that costs you the general election. The goal is to win the election, not just become your party nominee. 
And I think you got to give every candidate, regardless of who that candidate is, a measure of grace to be able to stretch his legs and straddle the various camps internally within a party to build a coalition that can win a general election. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. Now, Let's dive deeper into the Republican Party. And by the way, I got asked, uh, people haven't heard, so I do. You should, you should text the word DATA to 33777. If you did, in your inbox this morning, from me, you would have gotten um, the Tucker Carlson segment on Ron DeSantis. You would have been able to see it. You would be on the cutting edge. You would know more than your neighbors. All you got to do is text the word DATA to 33777 and click on the top link. But if you haven't heard it, there's this. And then maybe the most newsworthy response that we received was from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis has well-known views on many topics, of course, but until tonight, no one could really say with precision where he stood on the war in Ukraine, which is arguably the most important topic in the world. And now we know. DeSantis is adamantly opposed to the position that most Republicans in Washington have taken on Ukraine. DeSantis is not a neocon. Who knew? Quote, while the U.S. has many vital national interests, DeSantis writes, securing our borders, addressing the crisis of readiness within our military, achieving energy security and independence, and checking the economic, cultural, and military power of the Chinese Communist Party, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between Ukraine and Russia is not one of them. Without question, he writes, peace should be the objective. The U.S. should not provide assistance that could require the deployment of American troops or enable Ukraine to engage in offensive operations beyond its borders. F-16s and long-range missiles should therefore be off the table. These moves would risk explicitly drawing the United States into the conflict and drawing us closer to a hot war between the world's two largest nuclear powers. That risk is unacceptable. DeSantis goes on to oppose the policy of regime change in Moscow, which is very popular in Washington, and he points out that the Biden administration has created an alliance between Russia and China, and that's a disaster for the United States. Quote, we cannot prioritize intervention in an escalating foreign war over the defense of our own homeland, especially as tens of thousands of Americans are dying every year from narcotics smuggled across our open border and our weapons arsenals, critically for our own security, are rapidly being depleted. So that's DeSantis's position. That's Joe Biden's position in Ukraine, which is remarkable given the reaction of so many people to it. We should not allow Ukraine to expand the fighting extraterritorially. We should not commit American troops. But notice he's not saying don't give them weapons, don't give them arms, don't give them support. He's not saying any of that. He's actually saying give them arms, give them support, just don't allow them to expand the battlefield. And the reaction is hysterical. The reaction is also coming from Donald Trump. That's right. Trump is still trying to find a way to go after DeSantis. And the fact that this is the best that Trump can do suggests that Trump is having problems figuring out a way to go after DeSantis. For those of you that didn't notice, Florida was doing great long before Ron DeSantis got there. People are fleeing from New York to Florida and other places because of high taxes and out of control crime. It's really bad. Not because of the governor. Thank you, Mr. President, for doing that. But it's not because of the governor. Florida was doing fantastically. You had a governor named Rick Scott who did a very good job. Even Charlie Crist, a Democrat, did a good job and he had very good numbers. Sunshine and ocean are very alluring. It's not too hard to work with those factors. So just remember, Florida was doing really well long before Ron DeSantis got there. All right, we got to talk about this. I am sure there is a good nickname for Ron DeSantis. Somebody the other day, I think Trump at some point offhandedly called him Meatball. I think that one would work better, right? He, he tried Ron Sanctum, De Sanctimonious, and it just, it, it kind of fell flat. So now it's Ron De Sanctus, which just sounds like he's mispronouncing his name. 
Um, it, it, and, and if you're going with Sanctus, are, are you saying he's sacred? Um, I, I it, it's just, it's kind of dumb. That one doesn't, it doesn't really do any damage to DeSantis. It doesn't define him in any way to say Ron DeSantis. And that's what he's sticking with. But essentially, so Trump's position is that without DeSantis, Florida would be doing fine anyway. That's kind that that's that's his position. Sunshine and ocean are very alluring. Sunshine and ocean are very alluring. So how do you explain California? If it's sunshine and ocean that are very alluring, how do you explain California? How do you distinguish? That's the problem here. To praise Charlie Crist. Essentially, I get Trump's point that uh, Florida was doing fine. It doesn't matter who the governor is. Florida would be doing fine, except that's not really true. Rick Scott was a fine governor in Florida. He didn't battle the wokes in education. He didn't take on Disney. DeSantis is doing those things. I Look, I again, I get what Donald Trump is doing. Donald Trump is trying to find a way to message around DeSantis. Trump has about a third of the GOP in his pocket. Doesn't matter what he says or does, he's going to get about a third of the vote. DeSantis has about a third of the GOP vote. There's a third up for grabs, and a good portion of that third is looking at DeSantis, trying to figure out whether or not they could go for DeSantis. And Trump's got to find a way to break into that third and also undermine DeSantis with DeSantis's third of the GOP while not losing his own. And I don't think Trump, there's, I, I don't really think that Trump can do anything to lose his third. And with a devil may care attitude, I want to talk about that for a minute and, and scrap where I was going to go. I've had these conversations with friends of mine. So I I want to be discreet here. I am aware of a rabid Donald Trump supporter who fell on hard times. And one of the reasons this person fell on hard times was because of the lockdowns and COVID. And this person is only Trump. This person liked Ron DeSantis until it looked like Ron DeSantis would rival Trump and now is calling him Ron the globalist and hates him. Interestingly enough, this person lives in Georgia and wrote in Ron DeSantis instead of voting for Brian Kemp because Brian Kemp betrayed Donald Trump and then turned on Ron DeSantis. And this person having hard times, COVID-related, lockdown-related. And interestingly enough, it was Donald Trump who pushed the lockdowns. It was Donald Trump who got mad at Brian Kemp and Ron DeSantis for reopening their states early. DeSantis opened schools sooner than Trump would have liked. He got criticized by Trump. Brian Kemp very famously opened the state of Georgia before anyone else, and Trump criticized him two consecutive weeks in a row. This person's having hard times due to the lockdowns. I, and what I find notable, though, is that this person, a lot of other people, it's very clear if you know anything about a lot of these people. And I want to be clear, and I, I understand how it's going to be perceived by people who are all in on Donald Trump and can never, ever let go of Donald Trump. I'm not talking about all of you, but I am talking about a good number of Trump supporters who very aggressively will not vote for anyone else. Now, I want to ask you to begin with, I want to ask you, Are you open to another candidate? Or will you only vote for Donald Trump? And if Donald Trump's not the Republican nominee, you will walk away. If you will only vote for Donald Trump, only Donald Trump, forever Donald Trump, and you will leave politics if Donald Trump isn't the nominee, I'm probably talking about you. If you're open to another candidate... You'll go with whoever wins. You want to stop Biden. Then I'm probably not talking about you. I find a recurring pattern in the only Trump, always Trump, screw everybody else camp. And that is many, not all, but many of them are the people who I say failed at life. They made bad decisions. 
but they cannot accept that they made bad decisions. They blame other people for their own bad decisions. They will never accept responsibility. Donald Trump has convinced them he will fight for them. They have convinced themselves they need Donald Trump to destroy the people they blame for their own mistakes in life. So Donald Trump uses them to build his coalition, convincing them he will be their vengeance. He said this at CPAC, I will be your vengeance. He's not talking about the Democrats. He's talking about anyone these people believe screwed them over in some capacity. They made bad decisions. They failed at life. They screwed up and they cannot look themselves in the mirror, look themselves in the eye and admit and acknowledge it was their decisions that screwed up their life. Instead, They've concocted a massive conspiracy that it's someone else to blame. Other people are to blame for their lives. Other people cheated them. Other people uh, outmaneuvered them. Other people stole from them. Other people did things to them that cost them the life they wanted for themselves. They will never acknowledge, cannot accept. It was their own problems. And as a result, They are tied to Donald Trump because in refusing to accept they failed at life, they've decided Donald Trump will mete out justice for them and take revenge upon those they've decided to blame. There's a common thread here with part of the the woke left that it's everybody else is the problem. Everybody else is to blame. They are perpetually a victim, and Donald Trump is their means of justice. You can disagree with me on that, but I think I'm right. People get very mad at me for saying this, but it, to me, strikes me very much like those people who were protesting for McDonald's to raise their minimum wage. They had made terrible life choices, wound up getting a job at McDonald's, had no career path ahead of them. They were going to flip burgers for the rest of their life. So by God, McDonald's better pay me $15 an hour. I'm going to go on strike. It's not McDonald's who put them in that situation. They themselves put themselves in that situation, and yet they can't acknowledge their life choices put them in a position to where the only job they got the rest of their life is flipping burgers at McDonald's. And so they're mad at the world. They blame everyone else. They can't acknowledge their own mistakes. And by the way, if they could, they could probably work themselves, albeit painfully, out of the situation and get to a better life. But instead, they'd rather blame McDonald's, go on strike, and demand McDonald's pay them a higher wage because they failed at life. They can't acknowledge it was their mistakes, and so somebody else has to be to blame. There's not a lot of difference between those two groups. One is very dominant in the Democratic Party. One is very dominant in the Republican Party. And both sides, the common strain is they screwed up, can't acknowledge their own screw up, got to blame others, and find someone to punish the people they blame, even though it was actually them. Now that I've alienated everybody and made everybody mad... I, I've said this before, particularly about the, the, the people who are striking against fast food companies and the amount of hate I got. I actually I actually had someone call my seminary, more than one person barely, but one particular person got other people to call and tried to have me thrown out of seminary for saying people failed at life. How dare you say anyone failed at life? But you know it's true. There are people, you may have people in your family or in your immediate circle who have people in their families who you see the train wreck of their lives. They keep making the same mistakes, but it's everybody else is always to blame. They never want to take ownership for what they themselves did. And my gosh, does it make people mad when you point it out? Literally had people try to get me thrown on a seminary for saying it, and it's just a hard and painful truth. As my friend Andrew Breitbart used to say, truth is truth. It is not mean. It is just truth. Now, you want more truth? The truth is you should be doing business with Patriot Mobile and help grow the conservative movement. Go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric today, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You can take your cell phone business to Patriot Mobile. You can take your existing phone number to them. The odds are you're already on the same cell towers they're going to use, so you get guaranteed great service. You get amazing coverage. You get 5G data, voice, But you also get something else. Unlike your current cell phone company, Patriot Mobile takes a portion of its profits and contributes to the conservative movement. 
So Patriot Mobile has, for example, funded conservative parents running campaigns against woke school board members, and they've won every single one of those races. They've supported veterans and first responder groups. They've supported Second Amendment groups. They've supported the pro-life movement. They support conservative candidates around the country, and they do it by you taking your business to them, growing their profits, and then they grow the movement. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric, or you can call them 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. You get free activation, and again, you can take your existing phone number. If you got an unlocked phone, take your phone to Patriot Mobile. Tell them I sent you. Get that free activation. Do business with a company that shares your values. I'm just going to remind you. Had you subscribed to the daily email by texting data to 33777, you would have gotten the Ron DeSantis soundbite from Tucker Carlson in your email box this morning for you to see for yourself. In addition to getting the show notes and everything else, you you get stuff like that, show clips, monologues, exclusive interviews, all that sort of stuff. We'll be having more of those rolled out as well. But just keep that in mind. Now, speaking of Ukraine, I mentioned this earlier, and I want to go back to this. And I I don't have enough time for phone calls. Be patient with me if you're on the phone, 877-973-7425. But uh, Ukraine is short of skilled troops and munitions. Uh, Pessimism is growing. The quality of Ukraine's military force, once considered a substantial advantage over Russia, has been degraded by a year of casualties that have taken many of the most experienced fighters off the battlefield leading some Ukrainian officials to question Kyiv's readiness to mount a much-anticipated spring offensive. U.S. and European officials have estimated as many as 120,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed or wounded since the start of Russia's invasion, compared with about 200,000 on the Russian side, which has a much larger military and roughly triple the population from which to draw conscripts. Ukraine keeps its running casualty number secret, even from its staunchest Western supporters. Statistics aside, an influx of inexperienced draftees brought in to plug the losses has changed the profile of the Ukrainian force, which is also suffering from basic shortages of ammunition, including artillery shells and mortar bombs. The most valuable thing in war is combat experience at a battalion commander in the 46th Air Assault Brigade, which is who is being identified only by his call sign, Kupul, in keeping with Ukrainian military protocol. A soldier who has survived six months of combat and a soldier who came from a firing range are two different soldiers. It's heaven and earth. For a long time, battle strategists have noted that if Russia can just drag this out, they could grind Ukraine down. And that appears to be happening. The tide of war appears to be turning to Russia's advantage just because of time. And there was a way to stop that. There was a way to give Ukraine advantages. And that was Western militaries committing weaponry to Ukraine. Not troops. Not troops. No one's ever talked about troops, but more advanced weaponry. And they chose not to. The Europeans have dragged it out. The thing that Russia has done more than anything else is they have exposed the great Western divide. A, the West has tried to sound publicly united, but behind the scenes has been deeply divided. Eastern European countries are much more willing to help Ukraine because they remember what it was like to live under the Soviet Union. The Western powers, not so much. Germany itself has been way more cautious than any other country forcing the U.S.'s hand at times, and the situation is beginning to descend into Russia's favor. The tide of war is turning unless they all step up, and they're probably not. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on Chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.